Okay, guys, so as you're watching this video, a couple of things to remember. You're coming up on the 4B quiz. Make sure you have make sure you have 100% on the 4B review, okay? Because you've had the 4B review, you had it before we ended Chapter 4. When we ended Chapter 4, you had that as your assignment, and you've had three assignments plus that survey or that assessment. So you've had at least a week and a half to get that done. Make sure you have 100% on that, or you're coming to class with questions, okay? All right. So now let's look, because what we're doing now is we're going to talk about distributive property. So by now in class, I've talked to you about mama kissing the babies, right? So why don't you go ahead, and we've drawn pictures of it in the last lesson. You've seen this. Do this one. Draw the picture of it. Figure out what, if, what it is. Simplify this expression using distributive property. Whether you draw the picture or use mama kissing the babies, I don't care. And then check to see if they're equivalent. Okay. So go ahead and do this problem. Okay. Go. Okay, so hopefully you came out with 5t plus 20. Okay, so we talked about that. What this represents is we have five sets of x plus, of t plus 4. So I have t plus 4 here. And I'm going to have five sets of it here, right? So if I look, I have one, two, three, four, five Ts. And I have basically over here, I have five times four, which is 20, right? So I also taught you in class that you're going to take and say, well, mama's going to kiss the babies, right? So you're going to have five times T and five times four. Five times T is just five T. Five times four is 20. Then you check it, right? So we want to check and say, well, if we had 5t, so you should have checked it. So check it. If you didn't do it, check it so far. Check it now because I want you to see that when you check things, you can always know if you got the right answer because this is new. This is something you shouldn't expect yourself to be 100% until you get some practice with it. So check it to make sure because when you catch your mistakes that's when you're going to learn the most so go ahead and plug in the check on this because you're going to say that you have five times t plus four it's supposed to equal five t plus 20 because that's what we said it equaled right and we're just checking to see do we have are they truly equivalent okay so check it and then come back hit pause check it see what you get So I checked it. I tried to use a number I figured you wouldn't use. So I used t equals 4. Okay. So I plugged the 4 in for where t went, right? That's how you're checking it. So I added the 4s. I got 8. 5 times 8 is 40. Okay, this was the original, right? We're checking the original with what we simplified it to be, right? Using distributive property. And so what we did was now we have... 5 times t, we said t was 4, so here it would be 5 times 4, which is 20, plus the 20 equals 40. Yep, these two are the same, so therefore these two are equivalent expressions. 
So when we evaluated both sides with t equals 4, now if you used 1, then you would have had 25 on both sides. If you were to use 2, then you would have had 30 on both sides. But this is how you do the check. Okay, and if you want to know if you're getting the right answer, you can always do the check. So you want to get practice to that because that's how you play it safe, is do the check. All right, let's move on to some more difficult problems. And this is difficult because, well, there's a negative in there. So even if you already understood distributive property, which we've done a pretty basic, simple way to approach it, we've also talked about what distributive property is, and that means, and we've talked about the story about mama kissing the babies, but what that means is you're going to distribute the negative 3. Okay, so when you're simplifying it, you're going to distribute the negative 3. So we're going to have negative 3 times the n plus negative 3 times the 4, right? It's got to kiss all the babies. And so this can't be simplified, right? We have negative 3n and negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, right? So the most simple form is going to be th negative 3n minus 12. And we always put that variable. That's called our lead term. So we're gonna we're gonna put that in the front. The variable is always the leading. We go in ascending order and alphabetical order. But you don't have to worry about too many times we have more than one variable and constants. Okay. And you got to remember when to stop because we're gonna check these now. And really. One of the most common mistakes is to not know when to stop, which would give you negative 3 plus 12 would be negative 15n, right? So let's check those three answers. So we're going to check to see if we had negative 3 times n plus 4, right? And we think that's going to be equal to negative 3n minus 12, right? And then if we maybe some of you went to the extreme of saying, well, that's going to be negative 15n. Okay. Let's check and see if these come out. So pick a, ver ver a value for n and check it. Okay, so I just checked each term, right? And I went with 10, n equals 10. Because I knew you were probably going to use something simple like n equals 2 or n equals 3. And that's just fine. But I wanted to show you that no matter what number you use, it comes out. That these two, that negative 3 times in parentheses n plus 4 is equivalent to negative 3n minus 12. Because when n equals 10, they both come out to negative 42. So when I plug a value in, I get the same value. But if I would have made the mistake of not stopping, so I just took negative 3 minus 12 and said, well, neg negative 3 in minus 12 and said, well, negative 3 minus 12 is negative 15. If you didn't know when to stop, then you would have come up with negative 15 in. But I can see that doesn't work because when n equals 10, this comes out to negative 150, which is not equivalent. Okay. All right. So we can say that we just checked and figured out that this is the correct solution, that this right here is equivalent to this right here. And our goal was to get this right here. That's our goal, right? Just to clarify, the whole purpose of doing this is to see if we're right. All right, let's move on to another problem. You should be able to do this one then. Let's see if you can do this one. Okay, try it out. Okay. 
right? So hopefully you came out with negative 14 plus 35. Okay, so when I look at the first one, the first thing I'm doing is I'm distributing the seven, right? I have seven sets of five. So I've got seven times five, which is 35, right? And then I have, if I change this to addition, that's going to be plus negative 2t. And I have seven sets of that. So I have seven times negative 2t, which is negative 14t. And because this has the t on it, and this is just a constant, we put the one with the variable up front. So that's going to be negative 14t plus 35. Okay. Now again, go ahead and check these because I want to really emphasize the value of checking, right? So you're going to say if I have negative or I had seven times five plus or five, you start with your original equation. So just five minus two t. Always start with the original equation, and that's supposed to be equal to negative fourteen t plus thirty five. You're going to plug a value in, check it, see if they come out equivalent, right? Okay, so go ahead and do that. Okay, so again, I set this up and put in t equals 4, and I came up with negative 21 on both sides. Now, again, if you would have used 2 in place of t, you would have come up with um, you would have come up with 7 on both sides. If you use 1, you would have come up with 21 on both sides, not negative 21. So, I mean. You, you checked. I want you to see that it came out the same value on both sides. And because of that, we can say those two expressions are equivalent. Okay? In all situations, for all values of t, those two equations, those two expressions, 7 times 5 plus, minus 2t is equal to negative 14t plus 35. Okay, that's what we're saying, and that's our goal. Okay. Okay, do this one now. Remember, the only difference here is mom is negative. So when mom is negative, it changes the atmosphere, right? So just distribute, but mom distributes her negativity evenly, right? So just distribute, simplify. Let's see if you come up with the right one. Okay, so hopefully you came up with negative 2p minus 2. When we distributed it, we distributed the negative times the p and the negative times the 1. So negative 2 times p is negative 2p. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. We want up negative 2p minus 2 because we had negative 2p plus negative 2. But remember, we're going to change this. We're trying to simplify it so this has as few pieces as possible. Now, you could try this on Alex and see if it worked. If you had negative 2p plus negative 2, plug it in. Because we would have accepted it on a quiz, but we would have said the 4 goes to the kid who wrote out negative 2p minus 2. Okay. Now, check it. I mean, again, hopefully you already checked your solution. If you didn't come up with negative 2p minus 2, did you check yours? Okay. So by now I've expressed in the last lesson and in this lesson and the lesson before that how to do the checks. You should know how to do the checks. Okay. 
If you don't understand it, you should be coming with questions in class. That should be, you should be looking and saying, what is it you do understand? What is it you don't? So now when I look at this, I'm going to check it to see if it equals negative, if, if negative 2p, 2 times in parentheses plus 1, is equivalent to negative 2p minus 2, right? And then you're going to check it. So that's, that's what you should be doing, but I've given you plenty of examples how to do a check, okay? So check those, hit pause, check them, check your answer. If you came up with something different than negative 2p minus 2, well, you know, check. See if, if you're right, or see if you can see your mistake. Okay, so hit pause, check it, and then move on to the next problem. Okay, so look, we talked about mama knows that she's got to kiss all the babies when she leaves the house, right? But when you have, th so this is the house right here, right? This is just some guy standing outside walking by your neighborhood. So mama kisses all the babies, but she didn't walk out and kiss everybody. So she's only attached to these two, right? This is just a random person outside. You know, you're going to have a little concerns if mama's out there kissing everybody that walks by the house, right? So this is going to, we only distribute the three, is, this is multiplication here. It's only attached to this parentheses, and this is not attached to the parentheses. So you have negative 3 times n plus negative 3 times 4 plus the 7. Now, I would keep drawing this down because my experience is students that don't write it out like this lose that 7 eventually. Okay. And then we simplify this. This is going to be negative 3n. And negative 3 times 4 is negative 12 plus 7, right? At this time, I'm going to look and say, oh, I have lions and puppies. Here's my lions. And here's my puppies. And there's another puppy. Okay. So I'm not going to add my unlike terms. I'm going to keep this as negative 3n. But these two are both the same. They're both constants. So then I just think about, well, if I have negative 12 and I add 7, I'm going to go this way. I'm not quite getting to 0 because 0 is over here. So I'm going to have negative 5. So this is going to be plus negative 5 which is going to simplify to be negative 3n minus 5. Okay. Now, some of this should look familiar because the difference between this one and this one here is that the there's an addition onto it, right? There's an outsider. And the thing you have to realize is you don't distribute that 3 to this little stranger outside, only to the people in the house inside the parentheses. So hoping this is pretty simple, why don't you do this one? Go ahead, simplify it, and then check it. Remember... That's the power that you can check it always to see if you got it right. So go ahead, do this one. Okay, so hopefully you came up with negative 1p or negative p plus 10. Now, if you would have said <clears throat> 10 plus negative 1p or 10 plus negative p, that would have been acceptable a couple years ago, and, and, and you could test and see if Alex would accept that. Okay? But the, the best answer, the correct answer you're going to need for 8th grade and ninth grade is going to be this one, negative P, negative 1P, or negative P plus 10. Okay? You just check it, right? And if I said P equals 2, then I'd get 8 on this side, and I'd get 8 on this side. Okay? So check it out. Check it. Get in the habit of doing the check. That's really important for you. And if you look at this one, this one's a little harder. 
why don't you do this one on your own? See if you can do it. And then come to class and we'll see if you got a question on it. Okay. If you really understand what we're doing here, this is all is pretty simple. Simple steps. It's no different than the steps we did with these two. Right? The difference is you got more negatives, but remember, turn everything into addition so you can use commutative property and it'll make life just a little bit easier. Okay. All right. Hey. Go for this one, see if you can get that one, come to class, and let's see if you got it. This is probably the, the hardest thing we're going to do in class. Okay? The other things can be a little difficult, but in this unit, this is probably the hardest and the greatest source of mistakes. But remember, it's still going to be the most common mistake is dropping the negative. Okay? And not knowing when to stop. Now, the things I want you to continue to ask is this. I want you to answer these questions. What did you learn from this video? What's something new that you didn't know before, but you learned this time? Okay. What questions do you still have? You know, what do you wonder? When you look at this, what are you wondering? And what's the hardest part of this lesson? Answer these questions, because it's going to be different for all of you. You're going to talk about this in class, and then we'll answer those questions. Okay, good luck.